Welcome to our masterclass series in March. And we're very happy to welcome Jocelyn Go here with us um, to conduct this, series, this session on um, how to create fabulous content using uh, Canva. It's a very um, cool, easy to use, free to use partly tool. And she's going to be sharing some hacks, uh, which will be very valuable to create content uh, for your websites, for your social campaigns, etc. Also, some hacks to do some video, some pro tips, etc. So we're really looking forward to it. Jocelyn, thank you so much for doing this for us. A quick background to Jocelyn. She is the proprietor of her own company called Just Go Live Innovation Marketing. She's also a certified actor um, trainer of, um, recognized by the WSQ uh, Singapore uh, board. And she is also a professor and works at um, uh, training uh, students at Nanyang Poly. Am I right? In my previous life. In, your, in her previous <laughs> life, but nonetheless, it's a very valuable thing to do, I'm sure. And also a part of SIRS, which is the Singapore Institute of Retail uh, Studies. Yes. Um, she brings to forth all of these valuable experiences uh, today to share with us um, on the content creation specific topic. Mm -hmm. And we look forward to doing far more sessions with you. So once again, thank you so much for doing this, Jocelyn. We're very, very happy to have you here. I'm going to hand it over to Jocelyn to take this session forward. If there are any questions, um, uh, we would request everyone to please keep it for the end of the um, session. Uh, you can use a chat tool and Jocelyn will be very happy to uh, address that. Jocelyn has also very kindly input a link on the chat tool uh, already, which will give you an access to creating a Canva Pro account uh, free for about 30 days. So you can go and experience that. Um, having said that, let's move on to the session right away. Thank you, Jocelyn. Okay. I can. Oh, okay, you need to unmute me. Sure. <laughs> okay, um, thanks Uma for the introduction. Hi everyone. Um, let me just test my audio, like if you can hear me. Okay, so um, let me just turn on my deck to share with you guys. Um, okay. Okay, so today's topic is um, using Canva for your e-commerce and social media content creation. And I have titled this Great Design is in Your Hands. So whatever you are seeing now uh, is all created by Canva. And um, I believe some of you here um, are people from my community, so you already know me, and there are some of you that I've never met. Uh, nonetheless, um, I hope that this session will be very uh, beneficial for you. So um, before we go into the main topic, I'll just share a little bit more about myself. Um, so... I'm a creative director and producer with, the, with my company currently, Just Go Live, and we help companies with uh, video and live stream marketing production. And um, I also coach and train because I feel that a lot of small businesses cannot afford to um, outsource everything. So, you know, it's good to be able to learn how to do some things yourself so that you can have a more, you know, sustainable approach to your uh, marketing in your business and um, Canva is a tool that I've used a lot um, over the past two years in creating my own social media content and I don't know why I actually hang on okay and in creating my own social media content and um, you know and actually even in video creation as well so um, I think a lot of people are actually not familiar that you can actually do some video content using Canva. So towards the end, there will be, there will be some tips that I'll be sharing with you. Um, for those of you who are interested to learn more about video creation, I host free training in a Facebook group as well. So if you like, you can join. Um, I'll be sharing the link in the chat. Okay, just give me a moment. You can. Yeah. 
Okay, so maybe you can start by commenting if you are currently using Canva Free or Canva Pro. If you're using it Canva Free, just comment Free. If you're using Canva Pro, just comment Pro. Okay, and today we'll actually, I'll actually share with you how you can maximize Feed Free or your Pro account. Okay, so just a brief overview of what I'll be sharing today. We have four main segments. Um, in the first segment, I'll teach you how to start right using Canva. So there are, there are ways to actually set up your Canva account to help you, you know, be more productive in your future design work. And if you're already using free, you might already be familiar with the menu function. So I'll just uh, very briefly and very quick, uh, quickly go through that. And in part two, we will talk about the settings that you need to use for creation. Um, because there are so many choices. There are so many, so many choices um, in Canva. Uh, and sometimes if you start on the wrong foot and you complete your design and then when you want to like download it, you regret because you made the wrong choices in the beginning. <laughs> okay, so it's good to you know, start it off right. And then in the third one, we will, we will cover about uh, yeah, getting the right formats for your various platforms. So these two are very closely related. And, and then lastly, we will wrap up with some uh, Q&A if you have some more specific questions or you, know, you, you require some uh, troubleshooting. Okay, and so we'll try, to, we'll try to address whatever we can in this session. Okay, so firstly, it's about getting started right. Uh, there are four main areas that you will need to set up when you start Canva and that will be your brand kit where you will be able to set up your brand logo, your colors and your fonts. Okay, so if you are using free, so I'm using Canva paid and actually to, and actually to be honest, I know as a small business owner, sometimes you want to save money so you're not going to pay for it in the beginning. Um, for myself, I, I paid for Canva like in, intermittently on the monthly subscription um, every now and then when I needed certain pro features. And uh, I only converted to the annual subscription about two months back, okay? But uh, so nonetheless, my entire journey has been, you know, how to maximize the free features and only paying when I needed it. So in today's sharing, I will be showing you um, perspectives from two different types of accounts. One will be, my paid account, which is where all my work is. And I have purposely for today's uh, session created a brand new free account so that I can actually take um, most of you through in setting up your new account. So I'm not sure, let me see that. Okay. okay, I might have accidentally drawn some yellow lines over my screen, so. <laughs> okay, but let me share my account. So, you know, this is, this is about the amount of slides you're going to see from me because after this, we are, we'll all be going hands-on in Canva. So let me share my Canva screen. Share. Share. Canva screen. Hang on, let me just make sure I'm sharing the correct screen. Okay. Hang on, just give me a moment. Doesn't seem to be showing, but let me try something else. Okay, 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 so it works now. Okay. Okay, so when you get into Canva, they will prompt you to like start your first design. So I'm just gonna close this. We don't really need this. Um, 
I'm trying to find the close. Let me just pause this for a moment. myself okay okay we're back so when when you're first into canva you will see that they'll prompt you to select a template for your for your creation okay so for demonstration sake um i will choose instagram post because the square format is actually the easiest and most applicable to most of your social media content. Okay, let's go back to home. So, so when you first log into Canva, if, well, to get past the window, you actually need to select a, a project to start, but we'll go back to the home first. And the first thing you need to set up is your brand kit. Okay. So the brand kit allows you to upload your logos in various formats. And um, so this is where I would like to share with you some of the best practices when it comes to your artwork creation. Because when you create something, firstly, you want, it, you want it to have your own brand identity. You want people to be able to know that, oh, this is something that's of your look when you upload it. So like for me, um, if you notice in my slides, I use pink, gray, and green. Uh, so that's actually my corporate colors. So I, I keep my artwork as much as possible within these colors. So setting up your brand kit helps you to create your brand identity, identity much easier when you are working with, uh, when you are working with the Canva templates that's available. So you're going to need to your brand logo. So when you add your brand logo, Canva will prompt you to try Canva Pro for free. <laughs> okay, so, so everyone's usually worried because when you click in for free, they're asking you for your credit card information. So um, it is perfectly fine to key in your credit card information because um, you can always go in to cancel your subscription immediately after the trial is activated. So I'm just going to show you through another account, which I already activated the trial and demonstrate to you how you can avoid getting billed for the next month. And you can still create your brand kit during this 30 day trial. And after the 30 day trial, your brand kit will still remain there. So you, you can still continue using your brand kit. Okay, so I'll need to log out of this to another account. Let me just sign in with the account. Oops. No, this is not the one I want to show. Just give me a moment. Okay, so I created this, uh, this account has already been subscribed to a 30-day free trial. So what you need to do is, once you have your 30-day free trial, go to your account, settings, 
select building and teams okay so you'll see that i've actually keyed in my credit card number to activate the the, the pro trial and what you'll see is what you see now which is you can change plan or you can cancel your subscription so if you cancel your subscription now Canva will tell you, you, you still have your free trial until the end of 30 days. So cancelling your subscription now will not end your trial. You still get full 30 days of free trial. And you can cancel so that they will not bill you at the end of 30 days. Okay. So after you have, you know, after you feel, you know, safer now without being billed for the next month, you can go and set up your brand kit. Okay, so in your brand kit, what you need to do is you need to upload your logo, which in my case, I will just upload a sample logo. Let me find my logo folder. Our final logo. Okay, so when it comes to logo, as an example of mine, you'll see that I have different variations okay uh, this is my main logo and it's PNG so you need to have a version of your logo with the transparent background because eventually when you want to trademark all your designs you need to put your logo over your design and you need a transparent background for that and you will be able to do that in Canva Pro subscription so sorry yeah, later I will show how you can create logos. So now I'm, I'm just getting, so, so now it's a bit of reverse engineering, okay? Uh, learn about the brand kit first and then create your logo and upload it into the brand kit. <laughs> okay, so you need, so the thing with um, Canva, Canva, you need the pro subscription to do your transparent background pictures as well. That's why you really need to activate the 30 day trial to get all this done first. And then after that, you can, choose not to continue paying for the rest of the month or the annual subscription, okay? So this is just an example now of how we... So if you see that the background has like, you know, the mosaic, that means that your picture is of transparent background. So minimally, you need a full color transparent background. And um, my suggestion is you also can have a gray option, which you can see mine. And you can also have a black option. And you can also have a white option. Okay. So the reason these are the usual, like if you, if you were to hire someone to do your logo, these are like the few variations that they will need to give you because of uh, different case use scenarios that you will need. Like sometimes my artwork background is green and my green logo will just not show up nicely. So then I'll need another variation of the white, black or grey. Okay, and always create them with a transparent background. Um, I like using the square because um, it allows me to have a, a horizontal logo that you see now and it also allows me to have like a rounded version that I have now. Okay. Yeah, so it's easier to work within the square space and you can actually crop off the extra space when you upload it later into your artwork. Okay, the next most important thing is your brand colors. So you need to determine your brand colors. You can use the color picker here to choose. Okay, so I'm just going to randomly choose this purple. And you'll notice that Canva gives you color shades, which is the, the color codes, which is the industry standard. So you'll be able to use these color codes across different programs in future, like to get the exact correct color. You, don't, you, you cannot use your eye power to guess your colors, okay? <laughs> okay, what goes nice with purple? Orange. <laughs> so things that um, are opposite on the color wheel are generally uh, good combinations, a cool and a warm color. So like you can see in my logo, green is uh, something that's more on the cool side and pink is more of a warm color. And I choose gray as the neutral color. Okay, so you can add like up to, I, I would say you can go up to three. So let me, okay, 
I miss, I lost the orange. So I'm going to add like maybe, uh, you don't have to add black and white because black and white is always easily available. So just go for the more unique shades in your color kit. Okay, and then you can call it, you can title it anything you want. So I'm just calling it well, my different colors. Okay, and then you can also determine the kind of fonts that you want over here in the right side drop down menu. So you have a whole range of fonts from Canva to choose from. If you see the crown, it means that it's a pro. So if you don't intend to continue paying the subscription, I suggest that you choose those without the crown. Okay, so just choose those without the crown. Okay, you, the, the ones with the crown, um, Canva actually needs you to, to pay additional for it in terms of credits. So actually it's independent of like the pro subscription. Like even if I'm on pro, if I were to choose those that they call premium, I'll still need to pay for it, okay? So I suggest choose um, plain, simple looking fonts like what they actually suggested now. So we call this the sans serif, okay? Sans, so they do not have like hooks, not like Times, Times New Roman, if you're familiar with Microsoft, Times New Roman has a lot of hooks in their fonts and that's just not really the design trend now. The de design trend now are really very much about clean fonts. So even like RBG clean fonts like that, okay? And you can actually add more than one color palette, but you don't need to do that for now. Okay. Okay, so let's go back to our designs. If you click create a design, you can choose, you can actually search social media will give, and if you mouse over it, they will actually tell you the dimensions. The resolutions for the picture. So of course the general practice now for social media is um, square artwork. So I'm going to go a little bit further and play with videos. Okay, in the essence of time. I will show you an example of something that you can do either static or with movement. So I like to choose this format called animated social media. And when you choose a format, um, a lot of templates related to this format falling in this category will actually appear on your left side. Okay, and then on the extreme left, these are your menus of all the things that you can actually overlay, uh, overlay in your design. So let me see what's a good choice. Okay, I want to choose something that can, you know, show you the full functions of this. So I'll, I'll pick this. Okay, so if you notice one thing Canva, you can have multiple pages. So example, I want to, I want to play with a few designs. I can actually create multiple pages in one. Okay, and you can eventually download them separately. So it's okay to have multiple pages in one project of the same dimensions. Like if you want to do a series of sale kind of graphics, you don't need separate design projects in Canva, you can actually keep all of them in, in one design template and you can actually also copy and make changes to just the parts that you want. So you can keep everything else constant. Okay, so like maybe we have a promotion. Dollar, something like that. Okay, and then we can change the font size to something smaller. Yeah, and then you can keep everything consistent. Okay, so the thing about animated social media, you'll notice that they have elements here, over here that moves, and that actually helps to make your social media post um, more interesting instead of a static picture. And you can actually download it as a video file, which helps in social media algorithm because uh, we all know now that social media actually favors video content uh, over picture or picture only or text only type of content. Okay, so this will help. Okay. So when it comes to um, a template like this, how do you actually customize it 
to fit your brand identity. Okay, so of course there's a limitation now when it comes to animated elements like this, uh, you can't change the color. Okay, so it's like a fixed GIF kind of a thing like in your artwork. So pick one that fits your color. When it comes to the other elements like this that you can see me highlighting now, these are all totally customizable to your color. Okay. Let me just refresh the page. So um, Canva lies on cloud, so you don't have to worry that your changes get lost. Actually, they are constantly being saved. So every time you refresh, it's there. Um, Canva also has a mobile app, so you can actually assess your your designs um, when you're on the go using the app. Hmm. Okay, it seems that, oh, okay, let me see if I can add my, yeah. It's been a long time since I set this up. Ah, seems that Canva didn't save my palette. Okay. First, let me uh, do the palette again. Okay, I'm just going to try and select what's similar. And then an orange. And maybe a gray. Let me refresh this page, it should appear. Yeah, okay. So you'll see that whatever palette you have created, um, you can choose. Okay, in the event, so you'll always be able to get your color codes from here when you mouse over it. Okay, so in the event that you ever need your color codes for any purpose, just come back to Canva and get your color codes. In the event that your brand kit disappears from this menu, you can always still come back to your brand kit page and get the color codes and just manually enter them here under new color. Okay. So I'll just demonstrate this because the automatic option is uh, fairly direct. So yeah, just copy and paste. So you see, I've changed this element to purple and then this is animated, so we can't change the color. And for this, I may want to change it to orange. And this background that's turquoise, I will change it to the gray. Okay, the contrast is not very nice, so purple. Okay. And then you also see, so like this is black, I can change it to purple. Because orange is not going to show up nice. Or you can always add in neutral colors like black or dark gray. Okay, so um, in a brand kit, uh, in terms of design, um, try not to go, not to have more than three different colors and not more than three different type of fonts on the same piece of artwork. Um, for the three color limitation, um, black and white are not included. So technically, if you're adding black and white, you can go up to five. Okay, so because black and white are neutral colors. So something like that. Um, and this is the interesting part that I really like about Canva. If you see this picture and how it manages to get into this special paintbrush shape, right? So Canva has this very fun element. So I'm not going to tell you all because some of them are quite self-explanatory, but the fun element that I like is what they call frames. Okay, so we go to frames. So under frames, you will see that these are shapes that you can actually drag and drop your photos or videos in. Okay, so a most common one will be, okay, I, I sort of like this. So let's say I don't like this shape, I'm going to remove it. 
Okay, when you delete once, you are deleting the picture, you're not yet deleting the frame. If you totally don't want it, you just need to delete the frame again. Okay, and I'm going to resize this. So you'll see that Canva gives a lot of uh, dotted line guides to help you uh, position your, your elements. Okay, and then you'll notice now that it's not in the right layer, so you want it to move backwards. Okay. And then you can, so under uploads is where you upload your customized things like um, any other pictures or any other logos that you already have from elsewhere. So if you already paid someone to do up a logo, this is where you actually uh, upload. Without the brand kit or with the brand kit, you can do that. Okay. It's okay. So for example, I have this picture. After I upload it, I'll just need to drag it into the frame. Okay, so the frame automatically captures the center part of your picture. If you want to adjust it, you need to double click and you can adjust the picture. Okay, so like I may need to make it bigger. And let my main words appear in the middle in the frame. Yeah, okay, and then you can oh it's too straight i want it a little bit tilted okay you can do that as well and then make it a little bit bigger and then oh this scribble thing is blocking my words <laughs> you can resize it and shift it okay and canva will actually give you visual guides to do it and you can tilt it to what you want same for this animation resize it to fit what you want Okay, and you can do this. Okay. Yeah. So I'm not going to change their caption, but if you ever run out of quotes and captions, actually Canva gives some pretty good suggestions as well. Like uh, under templates, you can actually find a lot of things through, through keywords. So for example, you want to do something for a sale, let's say. And you just type in sale and a lot of templates will actually come out, which you can play with. Okay. Yeah. And then you can actually tweak the colors to, to fit your brand identity. Okay. Um, one, one missing part that um, may not be apparent if you're a new user. If I have an element here that I want to duplicate to, to another piece of uh, work, like another page below. Um, you can either right click or actually the fastest way will be just to control C and go to where you want. And just do your control V, okay? So that's the, that's the advantage of keeping some of your multiple artworks in the same design, uh, in the same design file because you can actually share the elements. So if, if you were to do a separate design, project for it, you will not be able to share some of the elements. So I would suggest you can actually keep a series of similar size uh, projects in the same file. Okay. Okay. And then when it comes to managing, you can just change your titles. So maybe this is promo one. What, what month is it? March. <laughs> March 2020. And then you're planning ahead. It's like, oh, I have promo two March. Um, April 2020. Okay. Yeah. So this is how you can organize your content. Now, because this is the animated social uh, media template, so you have the download video option. Now, if I were to cl click on the download video option, it will download all three pages of my artwork into something like um, a slideshow. Okay, but for this option, you can't really uh, control the length of the video, neither can you really control like um, how long each slide shows. Okay, so this is not really the option that I like. So if you want to have a preview, I just, I just clicked on the preview button. 
Okay, so it's like about five seconds per video. Uh, five seconds per slide. Yeah. And because this is a video format that they allow you, you can actually add in music as well. So you can choose from the left the video, the music option, and then you can. Okay, let's say we go for this. Okay, I don't know if you can hear this, but you know. You can actually, whatever you choose, you can just drag it up. Yeah, drop to drag your music. Okay, so this is uh, how you can use Canva to create simple videos. Okay, it's a little bit lag laggy. Yeah, so basically you can drag the, so if you, if you chose a format that's only visual, like maybe you chose Instagram post, um, then you will not see such options because that's not really a uh, video focus function. So not all the, the design templates have all the full functions. It really depends. So you need to know what you really want at the end when you, when you select. And then let's say, oh, I, I've done this and I want to convert it into a story post, okay? So you want the same artwork, but you want it in a different dimension. So there's a resize function, which is a pro feature. So uh, enjoy it while you can, <laughs> okay? Um, let me see, the story. So you can actually choose um, a, See, so example, Facebook story. So if they have an existing uh, selection for it, you can go ahead and choose the existing. Otherwise, actually, you can also do your custom dimensions, okay? So since they have the existing, we'll just choose the existing. So I suggest you copy and resize so that you can actually keep the original. If you just resize, the original dimension of the square one is gone, yeah. So to be safe, always just select the copy and resize because you can always discard what you don't need later on. Okay, so as much as possible, Canva has helped you to resize the entire thing. Now it looks a bit weird because of the top, right? It's like, um, uh, it's like purple. So you can actually make this bigger so the look is similar. And move it over. And you can also adjust this a little bit. So it looks as much similar as possible to your original social media artwork. So you need to, because what Canva does, it, it really, it helps you to fit all the elements into the new dimension, but it's not necessarily the best proportions. So you can actually change some stuff here, but at least most of the things are still here. So you have, uh, minimal repeat work to do. Okay, so we can add on this. And then we can. Okay, example. Okay, and then you can again. So if you have multiple pages, like in a slideshow format, you need to. Okay, so how do I repeat? I'm not going to resize this manually again. If I want the exact same size as the above, I'll just come here to copy it, Control C, and come here to paste it, Control V, and move it backwards. Okay, so it's more consistent. Okay, same for the other elements. Oops, yeah, same for the other elements. I can just copy them, uh, delete what I don't want. And I come to this artwork, highlight the base and just paste. So, so you have some level of consistency, okay? Same for this element as well. I'll just come here and copy everything. Okay, then you can delete what you don't need and just amend what you need. Okay. And then there's one more thing that uh, I think is a good hack to know because, well, it came about because it's a limitation of Canva and I thought of it. So the thing is we are very used to being able to bold, italic and underline our 
fonts, right? Because we, we use Microsoft a lot. So I'm going to change this to example, a more solid looking font to demonstrate this. So the thing is they don't have the shadow option in Canva. So you're going to have to create your own shadow. Okay. Okay, so, so fonts like this that I just selected, like the Abaya Liber Extra Bowl, these are fonts with the hooks at the end in the font design. Um, they are not very, they are not really the in-trend kind of fonts uh, nowadays. So just go for cleaner one. I will choose. Hmm. I need something bold enough. Okay, so maybe I'll make cool bold. Okay. So you notice that this font is really widely spaced apart. And so what happens if I don't, I like the font, but I don't like the spacing, right? So you can actually come here and adjust. Under the menu on top, called spacing. Okay, so no, line height. Line height. So the, 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 the height between lines you can adjust, the width between letters you can adjust as well. So just adjust the number down. Like now the spacing is like 18 pixels. So we want it to go, you can even put it to zero. Okay, you need to highlight all the text to do this. Okay, so spacing. So spacing is zero. And if zero is not enough, you can drag it further. Super new. Okay, so you can drag it. If you don't know what's a good number to go for, just use the drag function. Okay, so something like that is okay for me. And if I want it everything to fit in one line, I'll just drag the box. Okay, so for example, I want to use my brand color for my text, which is purple, right? And let's say I remove this background. So purple may not, let me change the background color. Okay, you want people to take more attention of your words. So sometimes you want to give it a pop. So how do you create like a shadow effect? So once you have your text in, you pick, copy and paste it and choose like a nice shade of gray and then extend the box longer. Drag it over and position it to the back. Okay, so you get a shadow effect and now you can adjust using your keyboard left, right, up, down arrows. Okay, so now you see that this gray doesn't work very well with pur the dark purple, so it's a bit too dark. So you can choose different colors, even black. You can choose white, you can choose black. Yeah, like, so maybe black gives it more pop. And you can choose the extent of the shadow by using the down button and the left right button, okay, to get the effect that you want. And then select both text boxes using the shift button and group them together so that they are forever married and move together <laughs> when you need to shift them. You don't want to end up like you shift one and then the other, you need to shift it again. And then you need to adjust again to get the correct um, effect that you want. Okay, so you need to group them. Okay, so this is how you can uh, play with shadows. And this is actually how I got the shadow in my logo. Okay, so someone asked just now about logo creation, right? Let me toggle to my full account <laughs> where I can show you my. So it's faster instead of I start something from scratch, okay? Then I press share. Okay. And then this can nope. Nope, sorry, wrong window. Okay, let me just get the right window to open. Nope, not 
this one. Okay. <laughs> so you see, I actually created my slides from my Canva account. This is my full uh, pro Canva account. So okay, when you have a lot of designs already in your entire Canva account, it's a bit hard to search, right? So they always have a, they have a search function here. So you can actually find your projects. Okay, I will use this logo that I created for an online shopping channel. Okay, so you can see that um, I actually made use of simple graphics like this from Canva with a color background. Maybe go to the card. You'll see that I have a lot of palettes uh, available for different brands because uh, some of these are things that I create for my clients' website. So I actually create the brand colors for them and I enter all of them into my Canva account. So you can see I already grouped here. I created my font with shadow. So what happens if I want to make this? So I have a circle version, I have a square version and I have a round version of my logo. So in my round version, I just want the circle and I don't want the white areas, right? So when you create a logo like that, you have to firstly make sure the background is white. And then you go to the download option. And you select download. Now when you, when you select download, you have different file types to choose. So you need to choose PNG. And for the size, um, I, I usually like to be a bit greedy and just download the bigger size available because that will ensure clarity. Like if you download the small size, like the smallest, that's 500 by 500. And then sometimes you upload it to the website. It can become blurry if your resolution is too low. So just go for the bigger one. Okay. And then you have to take your transparent background. So, and if you have multiple pages, uh, choose the page that you want to download. Okay. And then you click done. And then you can download. So because the transparent background is actually a pro feature, so um, as much as possible, try and do all of this within your 30 day trial. Okay, then you can continue using your, your logo. So and what I did was in my 30 day trial, I I was very clear all the things that I needed transparent background for and I really like made full use of my 30 day trial to download all the things that I needed for my transparent background. Okay. Okay. So for example, I'm just going to download it here. And when I open the file, you'll see that see the background is transparent. The gray is actually part of the software program. Okay. So when it comes to creating logos, um, I suggest that uh, keep, keep your text clean, like the font that I've used in my, in my example. Um, use something thicker um, because you want people, because sometimes your logo can be really small when it's a favicon on your website or when even on your social media uh, profile. Uh, it can be really small, right? So if your text is very thin and small, people cannot see it, okay? So you, you choose need to choose a more impactful logo. Uh, there's an example of such a font called Impact, which we see a lot in Microsoft, but uh, it's not available in Canva, but they do have uh, similar, they do have similar logos inside, okay? So maybe I'll share with you. See, they are prompting me for my, yeah, so you choose round or square. Uh, I don't know, I, I was advised by my friends with some feng shui elements, so apparently round is good. <laughs> so, so if you notice my Just Go Live logo, there's a there's circle element inside. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I also made a round version of my logo. I, I just find that sometimes, and you know like in, in Facebook, your profile picture automatically shapes, is shaped into a round, right? So if you do your logo in a more circular, circular kind of shape, you are very sure that your logo definitely fits 
in all the social media profile uploads. Yeah. So, so round is, is, it's always good to have a round option for your logo. So like for me, I have square and I have a round option. Yeah, correct. So you just start creating from the, the, the square one and then you can just have a round variation for it. Like you can actually see in mine. Uh, so there's another time saving, um, there's another time saving method you can use. So Canva allows you to create folders where you upload uh, your own your own media assets. So for me, like you can see, I have a folder called Profile Pics where I put all my professional. So I don't have to like always dig for them, you know, when I, every time I need to do my artwork. So I keep all of them here. Uh, and then I have my very different variation of logos that I always use for my artwork in another folder as well. So this is a function that you can make use of, which is um, very much more productive. Okay. Okay, and then when you want to create a logo, um, under elements. So for logo, you definitely need graphics. You can't really use like, you know, a real life photo, which Canva is great. Canva has like a lot of choices. Uh, I'm just going to share another tip here about like uh, photos and element selection. So when I search, okay, for example, I was looking for career woman, right, for a recent artwork. So it's, it can be quite irritating when you want to select something and then you realize that it needs to be paid. <laughs> okay. So to, to spare yourself the agony, just filter it first. <laughs> so for me, I'm on the pro plan and I maybe I don't want to see premium plans because premium means I still have to pay on top of being a pro user. So I will just choose the free and the pro option. Um, I, I don't limit the orientation yet. And then I apply my filters. Okay. Then it will not show me anything that I need to pay extra for. Okay, eventually down the road, if you are not even using the pro plan, just go for the free. Okay, so I noticed that, you know, they do have quite a good range of free visuals already. Yeah. Okay, so, um, but pictures like that are more for uh, usual content creation like presentations or uh, social media content, but not so much for logo. For logo, you actually need what we commonly call clip art or you know normal graphics and you will not need animation as well because you want something static okay so it will be mainly your shapes so like i want to create a circle variation i'm going to pull the circle in right yeah you can choose to leave some space around or you can choose to maximize the space because eventually you will export it as the PNG with the transparent background. And then we are going to choose our brand color. Okay, so this is a new palette because this is my pro account. Okay, for example, okay, too bright. Okay, this purple is a bit better. Okay. And then you will want to search for graphics related to what you do. So anyone wants to comment on what they do and I can maybe find something for you. <laughs> Give me an example of, is that, is that Sheena? Sheena, what do you sell? Or what do you do for your business? You can let me know and I'll do something relevant to you. <laughs> and if you like it, I'll just send you the PNG. <laughs> Clay art. Ah. Okay, so I don't know much about clay art. I'm just going to search clay art and see what happens. <laughs> okay. Ah, okay. So they have real pictures like this. Uh, not suitable for logo. We're going to skip. What you want to go for are graphics. So, okay, this is paid. Let's not, let's filter. Let's spare ourselves the agony. Okay, this is cute. Okay, but you can't change the color. So something like that might not be very suitable as well. What you want to pick is something that you can customize the colors. Or maybe this purple is not the right color for you. Any preferred colors? <laughs> maybe this pale yellow works. Okay. And we'll go back to elements. To search for clay art. 
filter pro oh she wants pink okay i'll change the color later after i find okay so i think this is cute okay so i'm just assuming that we're going for a cute image first okay you can if you want you can share the name of your business so we can add in the font yeah cute clay okay this is cute even it does look like a bit of a, a piece of bread though yeah doesn't it <laughs> okay okay yeah i think this looks less like yeah that one looks like bread with mold okay fun with arts ah cute Okay, pink. Let's choose a nice shade of pink for you. Okay, this is this is the very beautiful pink that I selected for my own brand. <laughs> okay, so maybe black could be a little boring. So we wanna, if you want a softer look, you can give gray. Yeah, because white will not show up unless you use a darker pink. Or we can always layer them to create a shadow effect. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so this is just very quick work, so please don't judge me on the quality. <laughs> Mainly sharing the features that you guys can use. So sometimes we don't want it to be so straight, right? Okay. So Canva will centralize things for you, make it a little bigger. Fun with us, and then we can go add text. Okay, then in text, right? They'll have a lot of uh, such templates where they show you. It's it's pretty good for like um, when you have promotional content to do. They give you some some variation, uh, mix and match of uh, fonts. So you can always start with this if you don't know what to do because it's fully customizable when you select it anyway. So I, for example, I selected this wall sale, right? And we're going to change this to fun. Parts. And then this is too big. Can resize the whole thing. And then they have this third line that says up to 50% off, but you don't need that. So basically, actually what Canva has done is, done is they've actually grouped different text boxes together. So all you need to do is ungroup and manage the elements separately. I don't need this 50% off. I'm going to delete it. Okay, and then with arts, the spacing is too much. So I will amend that. Hang on. The zoom is blocking my menu. Okay. Okay, so this. I'm going to adjust the spacing for the with arts because it's like too far apart. Oh, I'm going to bring the line back down and I'm going to make it smaller. If you don't like this, if you don't like this font, you can always change it, of course. But this is just an example of how you can make use of Canva first for some inspiration and make your changes along the way. So if it's angled and you want to fit it within you can do it you can do this maybe if you find that this font is not fun enough for you you can just select another font let me see there's this one called lemon tuesday lemon tuesday yep so this might be more aligned with what you do Okay, so for starters, if you're not yet a big brand um, and you don't really want to spend a lot of money um, on your logo, you can always start with a simple one and you know eventually you can hire the professionals to, to do it for you. And then we can always choose a different color that will pop. Um, Maybe bright turquoise might work with this. Okay. 
So of course, good the uh, to 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 create something that you know really fits what you want um, and the feel that you want. You will need to experiment a little bit. So it takes time because Canva has so much choices. Like fonts alone, you can just see the entire. Okay, I think this looks cute. Okay. Um, for your logos, I suggest, of course, as much as possible, just stick to only one or two types of font. Okay. And if you like to use like uh, a little bit handwritten feel or cursive like that, just make sure that it's really like obvious enough uh, what the word is. If it's too cursive, it's really not uh, easy to read, then that's not very advisable. Okay. I personally... But if you ask me, this is not the best that it can be. I actually like this part. Okay, but it's too near, right? So you can adjust the spacing. Okay, and then we can actually make this graphic really big so that everything fits inside. And you can change the font alignment as well. So these are the various ways that you can play with the elements in Canva. Something like that, or if you want to separate the word with an art, then you can create another text box to separate the word. So I copy and paste and I just throw away one word each. Yeah. Like um, connecting words like with, they're actually not the most important words in your brand so you can actually make them smaller and the keywords you can actually like make them uh, bigger okay yeah or even this can be just be a w okay so like my own logo i took like over two weekends to do it so it's not it's not going to be perfect whatever i'm showing you now but this is this is a sample of how you can use uh, Canva to create your logo. And the most important thing is you need your logo on a transparent background. Yeah, so that's the, the, the number, one of the key reasons why you need to sort of activate your 30 day trial first and, and do your stuff there. Okay. Like width is not important, I'll turn it gray. Arts maybe, can. Okay, I think they need to be of the same font. So this is supposed to be again. Okay, so if you, if you don't mind something simple, it's like almost there. And the word fun and arts really jumps out at people right now. So like, even if your logo is small, people sort of know what you're doing. Yeah. Okay, so, so the, the logo, logo trends now are, so I mean, some logos are even as simple as it's just fonts. There's no graphics. Yeah, so it's just brand color and a font. Okay, so it is always okay to start simple. Can make this bigger. Yeah. Okay, and then after creating this, if you need a logo just with the text only, you can copy this, delete everything else, and have just a text copy, which you can again download as a PNG and you can use this text logo with your other artwork also. Yeah. 
yeah, you can layer with other things. So you can have two types of logos, one that is just text representative and one with like graphics. Okay, actually this is not ideal because of this little piece of, <laughs> I don't know what you call that. <laughs> okay, so it like, yeah, so you can play around, but just keep the font type. So select the font that you like and try and keep it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I think I've shared a lot today. Well, the thing is, there's so much things we can do with Canva that I think one session is not enough. <laughs> so uh, I think we can start taking questions now in the chat. Actually, this logo is a question, right, which we have addressed. Yes, if there's, maybe we can give everyone a few minutes to type their yeah, chat. Hi, uh, if there are any questions, um, please do use the chat function to um, ask Jocelyn queries and she's happy to provide some answers. Yeah, so meanwhile, while we are waiting for the questions, they can still hear me, right? Uh, so meanwhile, we are waiting for the questions. You can see on screen um, the ways that you can connect with me if you need some more advice after today's session. Yeah, you can find me on Messenger, uh, Jocelyn Go Live, or on Facebook, Jocelyn Video. You just key this in your Facebook search and you'll be able to find me on Facebook. And there's also a free video training and uh, which I sent the link earlier on. So in, uh, in my Facebook group, I host a free training and sharing on how you can create videos for your e-commerce and social media content as well. And if you have um, yeah, deeper questions about Canva, you are always welcome to come and connect with me on Messenger. Can you reactivate the same pro account leaders? Yeah, so um, the same pro, so let's say now you end the trial, right? And then you're not built in the next month because you canceled it and you continue using for free. What I've experienced is sometimes Canva will prompt you for a 30 day trial again. And you can get your 30 day trial again. But I noticed that they have uh, reduced the um, frequency of doing that. I, I used to enjoy quite a few number of 30 day trials. That's why I was um that's why I was reluctant to go on my annual subscription. But I noticed that they actually sort of dropped it. So I do not know for sure exactly what they're doing in their algorithm. But uh you can observe like in the one, two months after your trial and see if they prompt you for another free trial. So it's possible that they prompt you for another free trial. So every time they prompt you for another free trial you can activate 30 days free again. Uh, and if they don't, and you have a few pieces of important artwork for that month, you can just pay for a monthly subscription and do whatever you need and uh, get off the monthly subscription after that. Yeah. So when you're on a monthly subscription, remember to uh, go and cancel the auto billing if you do not want to be billed in the next month. To create more content. What are the kind of content I normally create using Canva? Okay, so let me share with you what I have in my designs. I have all kinds of, so I have brochures. Okay, this is a brochure that I create for a, for a course that I'm offering. Okay, so this was from a Canva template and I basically just changed this visual to fit the title. And the, the, the idea, the, the icons I changed as well, but the template already gave me the idea on the layout for having three icons here and having three, um, three, uh, three uh, rows of text, columns of text over here. Yeah. So you can see I created various variations of the same. Ah, this is the original template. And I actually amended it to my brochure, right? So. So because we are not exactly, if you're not trained in design and you know, if you do a layout from scratch, it's going to take you very long and you'll be very clueless on where to start. So just pick a template that sort of 
fits what you want to give and just change certain elements inside. Okay, so this is example of a brochure. Uh, this is something that's animated. Okay, so this is a hack that I, I, I can only explain to you now because it will take too long to demonstrate. Okay, so what I did was, this is my final, final visual, right? And because I want to create an animated video where the text pops out step by step. So basically, I duplicate the final visual as many as well. I can like duplicate maybe eight copies. And I start deleting the elements that I don't want backwards, working backwards. Okay, and this is what happens. So you don't, call, you, um, um, don't select the direct download video option. We are going to go for the animation option, which is a pro function, but this is also one of the key reasons why I paid for pro, because I want to make my uh, social media content more interesting in the form of a video file. Uh, when I'm not filming an actual video, I can still make use of this method to have a video content. So in animation, you'll notice that if you choose the simple option, it will actually show the stages of your different pages in your artwork. So it's actually showing my page one, page two, page three, page four. So I'm going to put it on slow. Yeah, so you can see the texts are coming out in blocks, right? Yeah, and that's because I have designed them in the page. Like page one, page two. These are all different steps of the animation. Please click on the creator on Canva. Sorry, what does it 